I just knew this had to be done. It's got to get done. This soundproofing on the wheel arches is the only way to kill sound. But as I started, I quickly just fell into a deep, dark depression, thinking, What have I done? But I decided to continue anyway. First thing I needed was a jack, as the car didn't come with one, so add that to the basket. I also want to buy an axle stand just to be on the safe side, so that got chucked in the basket too. And they arrived before I knew it. You might be wondering what I'm looking for. Ah, found it. The jacking point in the front of the Iger is actually here. So that is going to go in there and then I can pump it up. Sorry. An axle stand isn't really necessary, but this one guy told me that he stuck his head under a car and ended up having it fall on him, squashing his eardrum like a watermelon. It gave me the shivers so I want to be as safe as possible and I'm going to use an axle stand. I aren't sticking my head under the car, but I aren't taking any chances either. Once the car is jacked up high enough, the axle stand goes underneath to support and then I can start to remove the cable tie that is holding my wheel trim on so I can remove the wheel. But it's at this point I knew I'd messed up. In my excitement, I'd totally forgotten to loosen the wheel nuts before jacking the car up. Scotty Kilmer would be so mad. So I lowered the car back down and as I don't have a mechanic wheel remover, I had to put these chicken arms to good use and it required literally my whole body to move a wheel nut. Wheel finally off, it was at this point I could see whether my initial plan of removing the wheel arch lining was actually going to work by removing all of these pins. I figured they'd be the same as the ones holding the interior panels on. They won't. After trying and trying, I could see that I was irreparably damaging like the plastic caps, so I decided to resort to plan B, which was just to cover the exposed wheel arch instead, but noticed it was full of dirt, so it needed a good clean. After checking the wheel arch to see if it was dry enough, I then began to use my tried and tested method of applying sound dampening mats, and that is just size them up. Nah, I'm kidding. Just size them up by molding them and then cut them to size and apply. That's the magic. As always, I did use rollers to make sure that the sound dampening mats were fully flattened, and this is especially important here as you don't want them peeling away. That said, this stuff has really good adhesion, so I'm not worried about it peeling away, but I wasn't fully confident on my mass loaded vinyl setup so I decided to stick just to sound dampening mats for the exterior wheel arches and as you can see once I got into the flow of it I kept going.
I'm really happy with the finish and I'm excited for the results. But before we get to ASD, the car needs putting back together. I make sure to hand tighten the bolts that hold the wheel on and then lower the car so I can put my strength to its full use. I use my body weight to tighten the bolts until they can't be tightened anymore. We don't want those things falling off now. I then pop the wheel trim back on and head out onto the open road to test the results. And here they are. One interesting thing, and I don't know if you've picked up on it or not, but when driving at 50 mile an hour, it actually felt like the non-soundproof side seemed quieter than the soundproof side, which kind of aligns with my previous observations of the difference being more noticeable at lower speeds in respect to the soundproof side versus the non-soundproof side, as you can definitely hear it at 30 mile an hour. I've also made this comparison before whereby you sit in the car that's mostly soundproofed and you feel like you're driving around with cotton wool in your ears and with having one wheel arch soundproofed and one that isn't it can feel a bit jarring and it did make me think of safety like you might not hear something as a result of the soundproofing and I know that's weird but more generally even though I've done the due diligence when I'd finished the soundproofing of the wheel arch I had this wave come of me when I finished it and you know I was thinking god you've done this but is it safe so of course I had to head over to google and start typing in is it safe to soundproof the exterior of a wheel arch and I was straight on the forums most people seem to agree that it is safe and they were talking about this product called silent coat so it got me wondering if I'd use something wrong or if it's some kind of magic foam or not but as it turns out the products look very very similar to the butyl based soundproofing mats that I've used and most people deem them as safe if not safe as anything else but not necessarily worth the effort so it's worth asking then is it worth the effort as someone who enjoys going the extra length to gain small advantages I'd say the proof has been in the pudding at lower speeds but at higher speeds that result totally confounds me. It's worth bearing in mind that I haven't done all the soundproofing that needs to be done. When I actually put a video out like this, I've only actually done the one part that you see. So in this case, I've done the one wheel arch and there is three more to go. So you aren't going to get the full effect of how well the sound deadening did or didn't work. But if you've enjoyed this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. And the previous episode is here for you. And I'll see you there.